this past week, uh, Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole uh, shook up his uh, his uh, shadow cabinet, his front bench, and I want to talk about what those changes might mean uh, both for the Conservative Party and for the federal government going forward. Not a lot of Canadians, frankly, in their everyday lives are going to be watching question period or are going to necessarily even know at the know off the top of their heads who the finance critic is for uh, the various parties. That being said, I think... Uh, I think that uh, Ed Passes is, an, is that interesting pick. Just if you look at his record of in government and uh, where he's been as an opposition critic, he's always kind of struck me from a liberal perspective as being one of a little bit more of the more technocratic. He's certainly, I think, a bit of a kinder, gentler face than uh, Pierre Polyev uh, in terms of just his general demeanor, the, his, the way he handles himself. I think uh, him versus Christian Freeland uh, will be a, a, an interesting matchup. Essentially, there have been a lot of people in the Conservative Party who have been worried uh, about Pierre Polyev lose, uh, moving on from the finance portfolio. This is uh, obviously um, a, a move in order to shore up the team, the, the economic team. Uh, these moves uh, allow the, the, that team that has been put in place to uh, you know, uh, pan out uh, in order to uh, sell the economic message of uh, the Conservative Party and allow and freeze up, quite frankly, Pierre Polyev in order to be able to, uh, you know, do interviews and then plan for the election as opposed to being bogged down in, uh, you know, details of the budget, which uh, can be handled uh, very easily by Ed Fast. So I <laughs> message to Conservative Party members that there's no conspiracy. Uh, there's an actual plan uh, there. What are your thoughts on the ongoing likelihood of a federal election? I know that uh, at the beginning of the year, we thought it was a near certainty. Now it looks like maybe not so much, but I, I want to hear your thoughts on that. I think it really is going to be a little bit uh, week to week in terms of the likelihood or not of one happening. And I think the government is going to have to make a decision pretty soon. Uh, we've seen some reporting maybe by the end of March. That'll be sort of the, the campaign's team sense of, the, of go or no go. So it, it's very fluid right now in terms of being able to predict uh, whether or not there's going to be an election and very fluid if there was going to be an election, how it would turn out. Whatever prognostications are on here in February, uh, you know, might be completely different, you know, uh, you know, in a few months, right? Everything, just look at the Newfoundland in the middle of an election that has some parts of their, their the province having the, the vote delayed because of flare ups, right? So mm -hmm. anything can happen, you just, we just don't know. And like I said, uh, you know, history repeats itself, campaigns turn on a dime and you're just, you just never know. Uh, in the big range of uh, conservative uh, changes, wanna just give a, a quick shout out to uh, my uh, program mate, uh, John Nader, uh, who is also a graduate of the public affairs and policy management program uh, at Carleton. Exciting to see some people from uh, my program uh, move up in the uh, move up in the uh, in the parliamentary ranks.